Hello class, it's Mr. Hunter again. So now that you got the gist of vector forces with a simple example, I want you to, we're going to relook at an example that we've done in class. And in this example, we have that same 100 newton mass. And this time we have two ropes on it that are hanging to a wall. And I probably should make my lines. And we know that this is 60 degrees, and this is 60 degrees. And I want you to find T1 and T2. So we're going to use those three steps to solve this problem. Now, before we really start, let's make some assumptions that we can make through math. Since we have a a triangle with equal bases, we know that the sides are equal, which means that T1 equals T2 because we know the base angles are also equal. And with that, we can actually move on. Also, we know that we have alternate interior angles, so if this is 60, we also know that this is 60, and we know that this is 60 which also tells us that this also has to be 60 because we have a flat surface and so these three angles have to equal 180 degrees. Okay, so let's move on into our problem. The first step is to draw a free body diagram. So in this case, here's our mass and we have 100 newtons, the force due to gravity, we have 100 newtons down. And then we have T2 and T1. So that's our free body diagram. Those are all the forces that are acting on this object. So the second step is, where possible, break up any resultant vectors, or in this case, we could say any vector that has an angle to it, into its x and y. So let's look at these as two different triangles. Let's take T1 first. Well, okay, so we draw T1 over again. And we know that this direction is T1 of X, and this direction is T1 of Y, and we know that this is 60 degrees. The same thing, we could do the same thing with T T2. Let's draw that arrow and break it into its x and y components. So here's T2. So we have an arrow. And here's T2x. And here's T2y. And because of the alternate interior angles, we know that that's 60. So now we need to determine T1. In order to do that, we have to move to step three. And step three is, if we're in equilibrium, which this object is, we need to determine, or we know that the sum of all of our forces in every direction is zero. So now we're going to break everything up into the x and y components. So remember, here's, our, here's all our y's. And remember that we also have a y here of 100 newtons. So, let's do all of our forces in the x direction. So, now we look back at our free body diagram, and the only forces that I have in the x direction are T1x and T2x. Let's say right is positive and up is positive. So, in this case, I have a positive T2x minus T1x equals zero. And if we were to try to solve this out, this, just, this says that T2x equals T1 of x. Which that sounds right because, as we said earlier, we know the sides are equal. If the sides are equal, it makes sense that their components have to be equal. So now let's do the sum of the forces in the y direction. We're going to add up all the forces in the y direction. So let's see, we have... Ty1, and that's heading up, so that's positive. 
And then we have T2y, and that's heading up, so we know that's positive. And we have 100 newton force going down, so that has to be negative. So that's the, all of the sum of our forces in the y direction. So if that's the sum of the forces in our y direction, then, and we said earlier, T1 equals T2 because these ang angles are equal, then I can replace any one of these. So if T1 equals T2, then I know that, then I can simply just say, okay, then this is T1 of Y. And since that's T1 of Y, I could say, okay, I get T, 2T of Y, 1 of Y, minus 100 newtons equals zero. So I just solve for T of Y and I get 2T of Y equals 100 newtons. And I divide by two. And I get T of Y equals 50 newtons. Excuse me, T1 of Y equals 50 newtons. So this equals 50 newtons. And since I know that these are equal to each other, this has to also equal 50 newtons. Although we proved it through math, we can also think conceptually. If I have a 100 newton force going down and I have two ropes pulling it up, they have to distribute that force equally. And in this case, that makes sense because both of them are 50 newtons. So our math agrees with our concepts and how we think. So now, we want T1. And so now we can just use trigonometry because we have a side and we have an angle. And so in this case, we want to use sine because sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of 60 equals 50 newtons divided by T1. And through some mathematical manipulation, I just get T1 is 50 newtons over sine of 60, which equals 57.7 newtons, or in this case of sig figs, 58 newtons. And because T1 equals T2, I know that T1 is T2, and they both equal 58 newtons. Using this basic strategy, you can almost solve for any tension problems that you're given. 